Howdy y'all, I'm Stone. And I'm Morgan. And in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to assemble your Onefinity CNC Elite Series machine. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we'll pull all of our rails and accessories out of the boxes, starting with the B, then the Y, then the X rail. You'll notice the B does not have a drag chain and Y and X both do. Here we're pulling the accessories out of our other box, then we are ready to start assembling. The first thing we're doing is we're going to remove the drag chain raceway from the X rail using a three millimeter hex key. We'll remove these two bolts and the drag chain raceway will come free. With that drag chain raceway removed out of the way, we can now remove the drag chain raceway bracket with a four millimeter hex key and an eight millimeter crescent wrench. Once we've removed the first two nuts, we'll slide that bracket off, then remove the two nuts behind it. Once all of those nuts are removed, we can pull these bolts from the foot of the X-Rail in preparation to mount the motor. On the opposite side of the X-Rail foot, we are going to remove the bolts and nuts with a 4mm hex key and an 8mm crescent wrench once again, then pull those bolts out so that we can mount the motor to the end of the rail. From our electronics and accessories box, we're going to pull out the box with the three motors included. They are labeled on the bottom of each motor. We're going to use the X2 motor for the X axis. On the end of the X rail, just below where we removed those bolts a few moments ago, we're going to pull the wire bundle out from the inner tube on the bottom. You'll find that the three motors in the accessories box have a coupler with a red bushing on them. This is so that this bushing will line up with the existing other half of the coupler on the inside of the foot of the rail. We'll line those up, then push the motor into place before securing it with our bolts. We'll reinstall the same bolts that we used before, with the shorter bolts going on the front side of the rail, or left if you're looking at it from the back of the motor, and the longer bolts going on the right side. We'll use a 4mm hex key and an 8mm crescent wrench to tighten those in place, making sure we don't over tighten them and crush the motor. On the other side, we'll use the longer zinc coated bolts and our 8mm hex nuts again to secure these in place. It's important to note on this side we don't want to over tighten them so that we are still able to tighten the bolts and nuts with our brackets for our drag chain raceway. Here we've got these hand tight and we're going to come back behind that with our 4mm hex key and our 8mm wrench. Again, making sure that we don't over tighten them, leaving just enough room so that they can spin freely so that we can tighten the bracket over top of them. With our first set of nuts in place securing the motor to the end of the rail, we'll slide our drag chain bracket over the end of our bolts, then install our second set of nuts, again tightening with a 4mm hex key and an 8mm crescent wrench. Next, we're going to reinstall our drag chain raceway. We'll simply lift that into place where it indexes with our corner bracket there. Then we'll use our 3mm hex key to replace the bolts that we removed earlier. With our motor now secured to the end of our X-Rail, we're going to remove the motor cover by using a number two Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two Phillips screws from the back side of the motor. With those screws removed, you can pull the cover off, exposing the terminals as well as the dip switches underneath. The dip switches should be set with number one and number four in the down or off position and numbers two, three, five, and six in the up and on position. And finally, we will connect our green plug and play terminal blocks into the Elite Series motors. Then we can replace the cover and secure it with the two screws we removed a moment ago. Now that we have our X rail assembled, we'll move on to the B axis. Here we're removing the bolts with a 4mm hex key and an 8mm crescent wrench once again. On the B rail, all bolts are the exact same since there is no drag chain. With all of those bolts removed, we can now mount the motor to the end of the rail. Again, we're going to line up the red bushing with the coupler on the motor with the existing half of the coupler that is already mounted to the end of the ball screw. Once we have that in place, we'll reinstall our bolts and tighten those with our four millimeter hex key and our eight millimeter crescent wrench once again. Again, on the opposite side of the B axis, we're just reinstalling our bolts, getting the nuts hand tight then using a 4mm hex key along with an 8mm crescent wrench to secure them. We'll 
Once again, we're going to use a number two Phillips head driver to remove the screws from the motor cover. Once both screws are removed, we can lift straight up, exposing the terminals as well as the dip switches underneath. Once again, double check that switches number one and four are in the off position with two, three, five, and six in the on position. Only after confirming that should you install your terminal blocks. With our terminal blocks in place, we'll reinstall the cover, then secure it with the two screws we removed just a moment ago. And finally, moving on to our Y1 rail, we'll use a three millimeter hex key to remove the bolts from the end of the drag chain raceway, just as we did on the X rail. With those bolts removed, we will move the drag chain from the bracket, and we can remove the nuts holding the bracket on with a four millimeter hex key and an eight millimeter crescent wrench. With those nuts removed, we'll pull the bracket off, then we will remove the bolts and the remaining nuts with our eight millimeter crescent wrench and our four millimeter hex key. With those nuts and the bracket removed, we can pull the bolts from the end of the Y rail and move to the opposite side to remove those. With everything loosened, we can pull the remaining bolts from the Y rail foot and we're ready to mount the motor to the end of the rail. Now we can align both halves of the coupler and push the motor onto the end of the rail. Next, we're going to double check the position of the dip switches, again making sure 1 and 4 are down and 2, 3, 5, and 6 are up and in the on position. Then we can install our green terminal blocks with our wires. Once we've confirmed that everything is correct and in place, we can put the cover back onto the motor and secure it with the two Phillips head screws. Once all motors are installed to all of our axes, we're ready to start assembling our machine. Here we're placing the Y1 rail on the left side of the table and the B1 rail on the right side. It's important to note that the Y rails have a keyed top so that they will interlock with the bottom of the X rail feet. We're going to hold the front of the Y rail in place and gently drag the gantry forward so that it touches the front foot of the machine. When installing your foreman onto a surface other than the QCW, the supplied riser blocks are required. The foreman riser blocks ensure that the Y axis gantry blocks clear the table surface. Riser blocks are not included with woodworker or journeyman models. It's also very important to make sure that your machine is squared. If you set it up in the trapezoid or parallelogram formations that you see on the left and right, your machine will bind when it gets to certain areas. After placing our Y and B rails on our table, we can now place our X rail on top, making sure that we index the feet of the X rail with the gantries of the Y and B rails. It's important to note that unlike the Y rails, the X axis has a flat top so that the homing trigger can be mounted. Once everything is aligned correctly, we'll use the X-Rail mounting bolts to secure this in place. Important to make sure that the X-Rail stays square to both the Y and B rails when securing or your machine will not be aligned properly. At the end of the X-Rail opposite the motor, there is a bracket for the Z2 wire coming out of the drag chain. You can use a four millimeter hex key to remove the bolt holding that in place, then move the drag chain bracket out of the way so that we can more easily access the X-Rail mounting holes. Again, we'll use the bolts from the included X-Rail mounting hardware and a five millimeter hex key to secure them in place. Once our X-Rail is secured in place, we can place our drag chain bracket back where it was and use the bolt we removed along with the four millimeter hex key to secure it. We have our X-Rail bolted to both our Y and B gantries. We're going to place one bolt in the inside corner of both the Y and B feet. Doing so creates a pivot point on the Y and B axes that will allow the machine to self-square. Next, we're going to install our homing sensors. On the bottom of the homing sensor, there's a channel for the wire to be routed through. In this case, on the B axis, we want the wire to come out on the right side away from the cutting area when the sensor is facing up. We can push the B-axis gantry away from the end of the axis to give us room to mount the sensor to the top of the B-axis foot. You'll notice that the bolts index with the bottom of the sensor and the included bolt will thread through the sensor and into the top of the foot. To the Y-axis side, we're going to want the wire to come out on the left side outside of the cutting area. And again, we'll use the included bolt and a three millimeter hex key to secure the sensor in place. 
For the x-axis homing sensor, we want the wire to come out the back, so we'll make sure that's positioned correctly, then secure it in place using the included bolt and our 3mm hex key. With the x-axis homing sensor in place, we can now install the homing trigger. Pull the x-axis gantry towards the homing sensor to make it easier to reach so that we can install the next few parts. The axis homing trigger not only triggers the sensor, but will also retain our Z and our spindle cables. We want the trigger to stick out on the left side of the x-axis gantry, and we'll secure it in place using the included bolts and a 4mm hex key. With homing sensors and triggers installed, we'll shift our attention to mounting the Masso to the front of the Y1 rail. The 4mm hex key to remove the bolts holding the drag chain bracket in place on the front of the Y1 rail, and we'll replace those with the included screen mounting hardware. The shorter bolts will go on the left side and the longer bolts will go on the right side. It's important to make sure that the mounting bracket and the cup mount that you see here are facing upward so that the Masso screen mount arm can fit into it. Again, make sure that the longer bolts go on the right side inside towards the cutting area with the shorter bolt on the outside of the machine on the side with the drag chain bracket. With the new bolts in place, we can lift the drag chain bracket back into its position on the Y rail and secure it with a 4mm hex key. Moving to the interior side of the front Y1 foot, we are going to secure the mounting cup to the front of the foot using a 4mm hex key and an 8mm crescent wrench once again. The mounting cup is installed, we are ready to add the mounting arm for the Masso controller to the front of the Y rail. Remove the bolt from the bottom of the mounting arm along with the washer. We're going to place this mounting arm into the mounting cup, then we will re-secure it with this washer and bolt once it is in place. Now place the mounting arm into the mounting cup, and we'll come behind that with a 4mm hex key to secure it in place, ensuring that the mounting arm will not come loose. With that arm secure, we can now place the Masso onto the mount. With the Masso mounted to the front of the Y rail, we can now shift our attention to the Z slider. We'll use the included Z slider mounting bolts to secure the Z to the front of the X axis gantry. There are four different mounting positions on the Z20 Z slider. We recommend starting with the top set of mounting holes, which puts the Z slider at the lowest mounting position. Start with the two top mounting holes using a four millimeter hex key to secure them in place, but do not tighten them all the way. You also may need to jog the Z slider manually to access the bolt holes for the bottom. Once all four bolts are in the correct mounting positions, you can go back and secure them all. After we've secured our Z slider to the X axis gantry, we'll start plugging in our wires, starting with Z2. This cable comes from the Y drag chain and goes to the port labeled Z2 on the back of the X rail. The X2 cable will plug into the port labeled X2 on the bottom tube of the X-Rail. And finally, our X-Homing sensor will plug into the X2 homing sensor cable coming out of the Y drag chain. With all of the cables coming out of our Y drag chain going to our X and Z axes connected, we'll shift our attention to the front of the Y1 rail and plug in our Z1 cable to the Z1 port on the Y drag chain. We'll follow that up with the X1 cable going into the X1 port on the Y drag chain. The next cable we're going to connect is our Y1 cable, which will plug into our Y1 port coming out of the bottom tube of our left side Y rail. We're also going to connect the Y homing sensor. Moving to the right side Y rail, we can now connect the B1 cable to the B1 port coming out of the bottom tube, as well as connecting our homing sensor for the B axis. Now moving back to the Z slider, we're going to connect our Z2 cable to our Z3 cable coming off of the Z motor. After connecting those, we're also going to connect our Z axis homing sensor cables. With our Z axis cables all connected, we can also remove the X axis homing trigger that doubles as a cable retaining bracket. We can then place the Z axis cable underneath the left side of the retaining bracket and secure it in place with a 4mm hex key. The Z-axis will come with the motor pre-installed, but we're still going to remove the cover just to double check that all of our dip switches are matched up so that our resolution is correct. Use a number 2 Phillips driver to remove the screws and the cover, 
and we can see that switches one and four are in the off position, which is correct, so we can place the cover back on and secure it in place. Our next step is to connect our wires to the back of the Maso controller. Starting with the Y cable, we'll plug that into the Y port. Next, we'll follow that up with the B cable going into the B axis port. Next is going to be our Z axis cable that we'll plug into the Z axis port on the back of the Maso, followed by the X axis cable plugged into the X axis port. The last cable we're going to connect is the power cord for the screen, which will be labeled screen power. Next, we'll plug the other end of our screen power cable into the power supply, followed by the four cables for each of the axes. When plugging in these cables for X, Y, B, and Z, it will not matter which cable goes into which port. They are all outputting the same amount of voltage. On the back of our power supply, we will connect our main AC power cable that will plug into the wall. With all of our power cables now connected, we can turn on the Maso controller and square the machine. To square the machine, we'll start by pressing then releasing the emergency stop button, followed by double tapping the home button in the top left corner. Once the machine has completed homing, we'll be able to jog each of the axes. We're going to swap to continuous mode and turn the feed rate up to 100%, then jog the Y axis all the way to the back of the Y and B rails. With the Y rails jogged all the way towards the back, we can now use the included Y rail mounting hardware from our standard hardware pack or the QCW mounting hardware if you are using the QCW. On the outside of the front Y1 foot, we are going to remove the drag chain bracket just as we did on the X axis to make it easier to access the mounting holes for this foot. Use a four millimeter hex key to remove the bolt, then move that drag chain bracket with the wires out of the way for the time being. With that drag chain bracket out of the way, we can use two more screws or mounting bolts to secure our left Y rail foot in place. Once that's secured in place, we can replace our drag chain bracket and use the bolt along with a four millimeter hex key to reinstall it. And once that's back in place, we can reconnect our Z1 and our X1 cables to our Y1 drag chain. After we've reconnected our wires, we are going to jog the Y axis back to the front so that the drag chain is out of the way and we can access our last two Y rail mounting holes. Use the final two Y rail mounting screws or the Y rail mounting bolts for the QCW to secure it in place. And congratulations, you've completed the assembly of your Onefinity Elite Series CNC. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good.